In the early 30s, Dwayne Bonstedt's father built him a little race car. Perhaps it was the 1925 Chevy Radiator Grill that inspired Sparky to follow a path that would eventually land him in, quote, the best job anyone could have. Sparky's father worked as a mechanic for the local Chevy dealer, later becoming service manager. Well, in high school, Sparky worked there too, so his ties with Chevy were pretty strong. After high school, he became a civilian test driver with the Army Ordnance Department. By this time, World War II was underway, and Sparky soon found himself in Italy with the Army Air Force's 460th Bomb Group. After two and a half years, he was discharged from active duty, but remained in the Air Reserve for over 20 years. After discharge, he went to college, partly on a GM scholarship, first to the University of Colorado, then to the Art Center College of Design in Los Angeles. It was at the Art Center College that he met Larry Shinoda, who would later be hired by Sparky at Packard and later be introduced to GM management by Sparky. It was 1951 that Sparky joined the Oldsmobile Design Group as a junior designer. A year later, he transferred to Chevy. Now mind you, this was during the reign of Harley Earl and later Bill Mitchell, a time when all design credit went to the head of GM Styling. So an accurate accounting of who did what is hard to come by. Harley would mix and match from all departments, but we can say Sparky made significant contributions to the designs of the 54, 55, 56, and 57 passenger cars and Corvettes. For instance, we can definitely say these taillights bear the Bonstedt mark. He was also part of the team that was responsible for preparing three variations of the Corvette for the 1954 Motorama. Perhaps most notable of these three, the Corvette, the Nomad, and the Corvair, was the Nomad. Sparky remembers coming in on a Sunday morning to supervise the cutting up of a brand new Corvette to be reworked as the basis for a clay model buck. In 55, Sparky left GM to go to Packard, but he was back with GM by 56. He was placed in charge of a Mini Cooper type project for a while, then moved on to other endeavors. In 1959, Chuck Jordan assigned Sparky to do a facelift for the Corvette. It was every designer's dream to make major changes to an existing icon. The most exciting period was at, uh, developing 63 cars back there. Just after the flamboyant 59s, we gained our sobriety and started to do some really good taste, exciting cars. Doing a new Corvette. Uh, doing a car that's exciting, that's fresh, that, uh, that has a different feel to it, but still smells Corvette. You know, they, they about dropped their, <laughs> their teeth. Because it was exciting. And there was an initial enthusiasm for it. But the completely new car introduction was not to be. Rather, it was introduced in pieces over a few years. The taillight design was on the 61, but the fastback and retractable headlights were not seen until the 63. From there, Sparky went on to a variety of other assignments, including Pontiac, Opal, and Stanford University. And perhaps echoing the Motorama days, he was made coordinator for all GM vehicles displayed at the 1964 New York World's Fair. His last position before retiring in 1984 was as chief exterior designer of the commercial vehicle studio. For the past 20 years, Sparky and his wife Betty have devoted most of their time to preserving the history and memory of the Air Force 460th Bomb Group with which Sparky served during World War II. Our first inductee into the National Corvette Museum Hall of Fame for 2009, Mr. Dwayne Sparky Bonstead.